me. I told you one sack at a time. What are you doing? You pulling for foreman or something? Day's work for a day's pay. like he needs a drink. So we won't let him do a share of the work. Would you mind moving your horse? The man driving that rig, did he go into the saloon? You gonna move your horse? Adam? That burn Hobie run plumb out on us, right through that store and out the back door. Hobie? Hobie Glenderman? Yeah, you know Hobie? In a way. If you catch up with him, you tell him that it won't do him any good to run. Tell him that the Ponderosa isn't large enough to hide a murderer. What do you mean by that? I don't know. Let's go have a talk. Majesty. Glad to see you again, gentlemen. You're just in time to drink a toast. To the Honorable W.H. Whitaker, Magistrate of the Commonweal, sometimes affectionately known as Hanging Harry. Well, the judge is relaxing a bit. Perhaps the judge will honor us with his presence a bit longer. Maybe we can get him to tell us some of his more sprightly stories. About some of the men he's sentenced to dance on air. Who are you, kid? What do you want? To track down an elusive quarry. Truth. I'm a newspaper man. Young, but very articulate. I work for Horace Greeley's newspaper in New York City. And I've come out here to gather in a little of the local color. Oh, I see. You ever think about picking on somebody your own age? Why, now, you wouldn't want to deny me the right of free speech, would you? No, certainly not. Not with a judge of the Commonweal listening? You are listening, aren't you, Judge? Why don't you shut up? Why should I? 
Words are my only weapon. Welcome, stranger. Allow me to introduce you to Hanging Harry Whitaker, the most famous judge in the territory. I happen to know all about the judge and his career. Why, then you must know that old Harry doesn't count sheep like the rest of us do when we can't sleep. No, sir. Old Harry counts row after row of dangling men kicking their lives away at the end of a rope. Well, there's nothing like a whiskey mouth. A little young, Judge. Anything we can do for you? Well, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I, I'm looking for an old friend. I wonder if you could direct me to his place. His name is Ben Cartwright. Well, it just so happens that we're his sons. <laughs> I'm Adam. This is my brother, Hawk. Well, <laughs> Judge Whitaker, I heard my Paul mention you. He would be mighty happy to see you again, Judge, oh, I'm sure. Well, I don't suppose he'd be expecting me because we haven't met in years, you know. But uh, he has written more than once to invite me to the Ponderosa and just happening to be in the neighborhood. He just happened to be in the neighborhood. Why don't you tell him why you're really here? Go on, Your Honor. Tell the good people the real reason. Boss, well, so why don't you uh, ride with the judge on back to the ranch? Uh, I'll bring the wagon in. Go on, Your Honor. Now let's you and me have a little talk. One of the great and mighty card rides, hmm? What do you mean about hiding murderers on the Ponderosa? My name is Jolly, Bob Jolly. It may help if I tell you that my father was Carl Jolly. A little over a year ago, my father was hung by the neck until he was dead. The charge was shooting a territory agent down in cold blood. Well, now, if my memory serves me correct, he was found guilty. Uh, there was evidence and, I believe, some witnesses. There was hanging Harry Whitaker, you mean, so bloated with power over life and death, he had no time for anything except keeping his reputation. And so, an innocent man paid with his life. I was in that courtroom in Pipesville. Your father was guilty. And he got a fair trial. If you were there, then you know he was railroaded. I was there. I was there, and I'm no liar. You old enough to use that gun? Well, what could I expect? The great American West. A haven for scum. A paradise for killers and gunslingers. Where bullies become judges. Good men's lives are sold to a screaming crowd for how many pieces of silver? Let's just leave it right there. You heard what he called me? Yeah. Well, out here, we don't shoot men in the back for just any reason. your father. I wasn't at the trial. Don't apologize. He was only a poor homesteader, not really worth anyone's attention. Boy, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if you didn't end this day in a pine box. Why not? I think it goes rather nicely with this law-abiding part of the country. The remark you made about the Ponderosa, now, what was that supposed to mean? You know the meaning of it. You hired Hobie Klinderman. That's right, but what's that got to do with it? Hobie Klinderman swore my father's life away. Judge Whitaker tied the knot around his throat, and today both men find sanctuary on the Ponderosa. Now, do you know what I meant? Boy. 
You know, you don't seem to have anything else on your mind but going around getting people all riled up. I don't know what you're after, but I would suggest that you go about it sensibly. Now, why don't you sit down reasonably, quietly, and speak your mind just once? Maybe then people will know what's bothering you. Wait. I don't know, maybe you are on the level. Here, this is a story I sent back east to Mr. Greeley. It's about your father's bosom friend, Judge Whitaker. You read that, Cartwright, then you'll know what's bothering me. strong, just the way you like it. Well, thank you, Ben. I think I still prefer it that way. Harry, it's really good to see you. Well, I can say the same thing, Ben. Old friends. <laughs> Sometimes you need them. You need them. Yes, indeed you do. Indeed you do. Oh, come on in, Adam. You boys did yourself a proud bit of work this morning, finding my old friend, the judge, bringing him out here. How'd you, uh, how'd you meet up? Oh, uh, we met in the saloon. Uh, the young fellow that was there was insulting the judge. What do you mean, insulting the judge? Oh, no, don't let it upset you, Ben. The young fellow's name was Robert Jolly. And I had the unhappy task of sentencing his father to death about about a year ago. Mm. Jolly. Oh, yeah. That's a man down in Pipesville, isn't it? That's the one. Carl Jolly. He murdered a man because he came onto his property and wanted to talk about buying a strip of land for the railroad. Well, Ben, you know how this territory's been hurting for a railroad. Of course. And of course, there isn't a, an inch of progress to be made without it, and the people knew that. So they were going to do something. So the legislature provided the money for the land, and they deeded it over to the railroad. Oh, everybody was happy and cooperated for the territory, and... All except Carl Jolly. Well, he, he elected to be stubborn. So even when Senator Prince sent a man down there to plead with him, he just shot him down. Well, uh... Bob Jolly wrote this article. He contends that his father got anything but a fair trial. Now, that is a devilish lie. Ben, my conscience is clear. There were witnesses and facts. Carl Jolly took a life. And I took his. Well, that was my duty. That was my duty. I think, Ben, I'd better rest a little bit. Of course. You already get that feed unloaded? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, Hobie gave me a hand with it. Well, Hobie's back? Now, how could he give me a hand with it if he wasn't back? Well, how'd you know that Hobie was the chief witness at Carl Jolly's trial? No, I did not. Yeah, young Jolly thinks it's kind of strange that the man that swore his father's life away and the man that put the noose around his neck are both here at the same time at the Ponderosa. I'll 
tell you something else about your friend, the judge. Must be something that drives a man to the bottle before the sun is barely up in the morning. According to Young Jolly, he hasn't sat in a courtroom for six months now. He just travels around from town to town, bar to bar. Joe, call in Hobie. Yes, sir. Shot at a rattler about a mile back. Good. Maybe you can show us that rattler. I'm afraid I can't. I missed. scared to death of a quiet one. Who riled him up? Who knows? All that takes is one voice and a good argument. Now, inside, I've got the son of a man who was hanged for murder. And only yesterday, he shot an innocent man. Has anybody proved that? No, but they all believe that he did it. Are you inside? Yeah. Well, well, well. Look who's come to visit the poor dollar a column newspaper fellow. Well, we thought we'd uh, see if you want us to hire a lawyer for you. A lawyer? Well, I'm touched. Really touched. No, thank you, gentlemen. They hired a lawyer for my father. A young man who had just finished his reading in a lawyer's office. A young fellow who hadn't even seen the outside of a law school. My father was arrested tried and hanged in three days. Nevertheless, we thought we might be of some help. Gentlemen, let's not be inconsistent. You Cartwrights have the chief witness for the prosecution on your payroll, and you have the hanging judge in your house as a house guest. Come on, Adam. We'll see you at the preliminary hearing. Preliminary to what? The hanging? You mind telling me something, Jolly? What's really eating you? What's eating me? Injustice, Cartwright. Like an acid. Eating my insides out. You sure it isn't something else? Get out. You know what a 45 slug could do. However, Hobie's a tough nut. He'll be all right. Say a 45 slug? 
Yes. Hmm. Jolly was at 38, doesn't he? Maybe that hearing shouldn't be held. Well, I'd better tell Judge Whitaker. No, no, wait, hold on. Why don't we uh, hold off telling the judge about this for a little while, huh? What's in your mind? Well, maybe this will give us a chance to find out if he's willing to dig out these new facts for himself. for trial on the charge of attempted murder. If the accused is so remanded, I will disqualify myself and refer the case to another judge. All right, let's get on with it. Sheriff, were there any witnesses to the shooting? You know that there wasn't, Your Honor. But Bob Jolly showed up right after the shooting, and, uh, well, his gun had been fired not too long before that. Now, he said that he shot a snake, but there wasn't any proof of that. Was the bullet recovered? I think so. You got it, ain't you, Doc? Yes, I have it. Describe the bullet. It's base metal, predominantly lead. 45 caliber. What caliber was the accused's gun? It's a 38, Your Honor. Is there any proof that the accused owned or had access to a 45 caliber gun? Well, no, I just supposed that... In the law, we don't suppose. Until you get proof, case dismissed. Release the prisoner. Harry, let's get back to the Ponderosa. Well staged, Your Honor. Very well staged. Jolly, I thought you'd be satisfied. I'll be satisfied when I get your friend, the judge, and Hobie Klinderman together. Your father was guilty. I did the right thing. I, I did the right thing. I... Then I, I think I better get a drink. I. Well, there's one thing for sure. Boy in there's got a lot of courage. Well, either that or a lot of gall. Yeah. Gall of courage. We better keep an eye on him while he's in town. He's not making any friends. That's for sure. How are you, sir? Tolerable, Mr. Cartwright, tolerable. Well, Virginia said he's honored. Thank you very much, sir. I am not here on official business. I just happen to be passing through. And, Harry, I was wondering, is there somewhere we could have a drink? Uh, alone, I mean. Well, I, I'm with Ben Cartwright here. Oh, excuse no, me, no, no, no. Mr. Cartwright. Adam. Oh, uh, Senator Prince, I believe they have some rooms back here, but I, I want you to meet my eldest son, Adam, Senator Prince. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Now, uh, would you mind, Harry? You will excuse us, sir. Certainly, certainly. Harry, I have many things to discuss with you. Senator Prince, wasn't he the chairman on that legislative committee, the uh, one that set up that railroad deal? I believe he was, yes. Yes, why? Uh, funny. 
Seems that everybody had anything to do with Carl Jolly's all of a sudden showing up in Virginia City. I say a trial was too good for your father. I say they shouldn't even have wasted the time. Just stretched his neck right there on the spot. What is it they sing? He shot a man who came to help. He shot him cold without a chance. But hanging hair, he made him dance. Carl Jolly. Go on. Pull it. Everyone's watching. The world ain't gonna miss this Jolly any more than the last one. Hard right. This is my affair. Don't do it. You taking this up? No. It's not to take up. Hold it! See, this is my business. Use your feet. Clear on out of town. You're out of business. Well, who's guilty in this case, Judge? I don't know what you mean, and I will not be talked to in that manner. Disrespect, sir. The man out there was a hired gunman, a professional killer. He was hired to pick a fight with Bob Jolly. Now, it seems that someone is very interested in hushing up the Jolly case. Now, do you know what I mean, sir? This is ridiculous. From Riff Raff, I could understand. But from a Cartwright. All that boy asked is the right to question the judge and the chief witness for the prosecution about his father's trial. If you knew anything about the law, young man, you'd know that Robert Jolly has no such right. His father was tried. The law has spoken, and that is it. Questions, Senator, just reasonable questions. And how, I ask, can we expect reason from the son of a convicted murderer? and to ask Harry Whittaker, our great judge, a man who may one day sit on the supreme bench of the United States, to ask this man to subject himself to the so-called reasonable questions of a boy weighted down with the knowledge that he is a cold-blooded, murderous son? No. Gentlemen, no. As long as I have anything to say in this territory, our courts, our judges, will not be subjected to such indignity. Thank you, Senator Prince. A sensitive judge can, I have learned, be driven to distraction. Flooded with confusion as to the validity of his most honest decisions. So, here and now, I declare that henceforth I will be responsible only to the law and to the people of this territory. And I will not subject myself to the bias, vindictive, unreasonable inquisition of a Robert Jolly or any man like him. Very good. Judge Whitaker! Just one more question, sir. I am not biased. I am not vindictive nor unreasonable. And my name is not Robert Jolly. 
And my father has not been accused, arrested, tried, convicted, and hanged in three days for murder. Though maybe that's just through the grace of God. And I haven't been forced to chase a judge all over the territory to ask him questions, which I had a right to ask. How dare you? I dare, sir, because I've lived in this territory most of my life. I have part of its future, and I want to be proud of it. So don't deny me that. Now, Hobie Klinderman is going to be up and around in a couple of days. I am willing to meet the both of you here in this saloon Friday morning. But I leave that decision up to you, Judge. I think so. I've spent three days gathering material about something I wish I'd never gotten mixed up in. Go on. Well, Judge Whitaker is your friend. But I don't believe he's the man you think he is. So I'm going to leave it up to you. You want me to go on with it? You've got to live with yourself. You've got to do what your conscience thinks is right. All right. farmer down near Pikesville was tried in my court. He was convicted. I had to sentence him to death by hanging. Well, a few days ago, a young citizen of this territory by the name of Adam Cartwright demanded that he have the right to question me and uh, Hobie Klinderman, who, by the way, was the chief witness for the people in the trial against Carl Jolly. Neither Adam Cartwright nor any other private citizen has that right. But for the sake of community harmony and for the fear that to do otherwise might be a disservice to the law, I extend to Adam Cartwright the privilege to ask me any question that he chooses. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Bob, you told me that your father was a poor, uneducated, warm-hearted man who... What's wrong with that? He was. Well, I've just come from Pipesville. And Carl Jolly's former neighbors told me that he was the most stubborn, cantankerous, and argumentative man that ever drew a breath. Well, there are a lot of liars. Isn't it true that he argued with you constantly? That he even picked a fight with you one Sunday morning in church? 
Bob, isn't it true that you hated the farm and that you wanted to run away to New York, get away? And that your father took a gun and he aimed it at your head and he said that he'd kill you if you dared leave the farm? Now, isn't that true, Bob? All right. But my father didn't really mean any harm by it. He only pointed a gun at me and told me I couldn't go. And I said to him, if you want me to stay on this farm, you'll have to kill me and bury me here. And I turned and walked away. And I never looked back. Never. Until it was too late. Didn't you ever write him? Often, at first. But he never answered, so I stopped. I remember the first letter, the only letter I ever got. I had moved away from the address he had, so I got it four months late. I shall never forget that letter. My dear son, I'm in jail. They say I killed a railroad feller. I didn't but they're going to hang me. I wish I could kiss you goodbye. Respectfully, your father. This is unfair, grossly unfair. Let's not forget that Bill Hauser died too. Yes, and he died with Carl Jolly's bullet in his heart. That's been proved. Senator, Senator, I think if you'll just be patient, sir, you'll get your turn. I don't want my turn, Cartwright. I want this whole farce of a trial stopped right now. These, these proceedings are ridiculous. Your Honor. Proceed. <clears throat> Hobie, uh, you and the, um, well, the man was killed. What's his name again? Hauser. Billy Hauser. Yes, Bill Hauser. The two of you worked for Senator Prince and his legislative committee, didn't you? That's right. And it, uh, it was your job to travel across the country from farm to farm and buy the strip of land to be used for the right of way of the railroad, right? Yes. Uh, do you mind reading that? That's uh, part of your testimony from the trial. <coughs> me, me and Hauser tried to explain to Jolly about the good the railroad would do. But before we could get more than a few words out, Jolly pulled out his gun and shouted for us to get the heck off in his land and never to cross it again. I always knew he was dangerous and I was afraid. Me and Hauser wasn't carrying any guns and this guy Jolly had murder in his eye. So I took off and started to run and then suddenly I heard a shot. I turned back and there was Billy Hauser lying there dead. I managed to get out of there fast. Now that is your testimony, huh? Yeah, that's that's my testimony. All right, right. thanks, Robbie. Oh, and uh, you and Bill Hauser out there riding around through the open country. What'd you eat? Mostly things along the way. Sometimes a farmer'd feed us. Sometimes we build a fire, cook a. Rabbit, squirrels, something like that. Rabbits and squirrels. How'd you catch them? Oh, we didn't catch them. We, uh, well, we get close enough most times for a good shot at them. I don't understand. Me and Hauser wasn't carrying any guns. What'd you shoot them with? Well, 
sometimes we carried guns. Oh, sometimes. Well, usually. Usually. But not when you were going to see a man that you knew that was dangerous. At least that's what you said he was here, dangerous. I don't know. You, you... All I know is on, on that particular day, we wasn't carrying any guns. Well, why not? That doesn't make sense. I don't know. I... Oh, this is outrageous. This would never be permitted in a court of law. Why, well, this man Cartwright won't accept the witness answers. Well, at least he gave you an answer. Judge, would you accept that answer? Yes, of course you would. You already have accepted it, haven't you? Now, why did you? Because in the court of law, a witness has the right to give any reasonable answer to a question. Judge, you're familiar with this country, its ways. Do you really believe that Hobie and his partner traveled around the country unarmed? <coughs> Could be true. Could have been? Well, didn't you question it even once? I did the best I could. Judge, Carl Jolly's only hope in that courtroom was you. The record clearly states that he told you time and time again that Hauser was armed, that it was Hauser who drew on him first, and that he had to kill him in self-defense. But you wouldn't listen. You didn't even ask Hobie the simplest of questions to get at the real truth. But why not, Judge? Because you wanted Carl Jolly to hang? Because, like the rest of the town, you hated him? No. I despise people who descend to hatred. I, I, well, I, maybe I, that's why you've been running away these past few months. Because you're afraid of examining your conscience. Because you were afraid you'd end up despising yourself. But you're going to have to face up to it sooner or later, Judge. Because that's the kind of a man you are. If you weren't, you wouldn't be here today. Why, you'd have laughed at Bob Jolly the first time he accused you, or you'd have had him arrested for disturbing the peace. But you couldn't do it. Because basically, you're... you're what my father says you are. An honest, honorable man. I would say this has gone just about far enough Gentlemen, how can we sit here and watch a great public servant hounded no, and degraded? No, 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 no. I suppose I, I knew it all along, but I, I just couldn't face it. There were errors in the trial, but I did not know that they were deliberate. Hatred. No. I told myself it was love. Love of the territory, love of the people. I mean, they honored me, they respected me, and they looked up to me, and I dedicated my life to them and their welfare. But, why couldn't this man see what a railroad would mean? How couldn't he see standing on that vital piece of land, heedless of his neighbors, and stopping every bit of progress in the territory just because he didn't care to change? But he was a human being. And he had a right to live. Perhaps if I'd known more truth about Carl Jolly, he would have deserved to die anyway. But my crime was that I I didn't reach beyond enough to find the truth. The people made me their judge. And I tried one of my fellow men, and I failed to give him the full protection of the law. No judge can do a greater wrong. No, judge, it wasn't you. It wasn't you who did wrong. 
Keep your mouth shut, Klinderman. No, I won't. Not any longer. I'm going to tell the truth. I lied in your court. Hauser and me, we was both carrying guns that day. Hauser drew first on Jolly. Jolly had to kill him in self-defense. Senator Prince told us that if we didn't get rid of Carl Jolly, Jolly would block the railroad. This is an outrageous lie. This man is making the whole thing up. Surely you don't take his word over mine. There will be an investigation, Senator. Not only of my judicial conduct, but of the perjury committed in my court and the procurement of that perjury, which is now charged to you. Sheriff? You'll never prove anything against me, you doddering old fool. My hands are clean. Oh, is that why you had Morton, a professional gunman, on your payroll? Maybe now we'll find out who tried to kill Hobie and uh, who paid to have it done. You'll never prove anything. Well, we'll certainly try, Senator. Senator? I'm sorry, Judge. You will never get away with this. Never. Come on over. <coughs> Thank you, Ben. Will you do something for me? Will you walk out of here with me to show these people that at least in your eyes I'm not a totally evil man? I'd be proud to judge. There isn't much to say, is there? I guess not. I'm going to give that land to the railroad, Adam. I think my father would want me to now. It's his way and mine of saying thanks. I won't forget you. Yeah, and I won't forget you either. A little local color. Mark! 